Hello everyone and welcome to this new video of our series chart settings window for our Sierra chart platform. In this video we are going to cover the symbol settings tab which could be accessed by going to chart chart settings. Number one adding or changing the symbol of a chart. To change the symbol of a chart you could click on the symbol line section here. You could either Click and delete this and then type the new symbol if you know the symbol or you could click select and it will open up the new window and the easiest way to find the symbol is to click on the market that you are looking to trade. In this case, if you want to trade ES, you could click on the CME market and open the plus sign there next to where it says future CME real time. And click at the bottom where it says search and you could type ES and then click on find next. Um, you might have to click several times um, until it goes to the symbol that you're looking for. So you have ES right here and then click on the contract that you want. In this case, we want the June contract 2022 and then click OK. It will automatically add the symbol there. You can click A to apply or click away to apply the changes just made to that line. Then you could click apply all to make the changes to the new symbol. Number two, how to trade a different symbol than the one that you're looking at on the chart. To trade a different symbol, other than the one that you're looking at on the chart. So in this case, let's say we want to watch the ES, but we want to trade the micro ES. So what you want to do is go, go to the trade and current quote symbol area here, click select. So you get the find symbol window. Um, here we could either click on search and type MES. And for faster results, you want to click here where it says futures CME and open the plus sign after you type MES here at the bottom where it says search click find next and it quickly finds it right here you want to open the plus sign to select the contract and then um, click on it click ok the symbol is gonna come up here you could click apply and then apply all you will know that it made the changes um, because if you look up here at the top of the app, you will have ES, which is the main symbol, and then MES, which is the symbol that you want to trade. Then you want to go to this uh, third line where it says use as trade symbol only, and you would like to turn this on if you only want to be able to trade the MES and get the data for the ES. Number three, how to automatically roll over future contracts. This area right here, you basically only have to click on it. Um, if you are on a different setting, obviously click twice to change the setting here on the value column and turn it on to yes. This setting only works for futures and is set up in the symbol settings to be rollover about one week before the previous contract expires. So let's say if the June contract is about to come up eight days before the March contract expires, this is going to roll over unless you change that setting in the symbol settings. And once you make the changes here, make sure to click apply all so the charts makes the changes for you. Number four, what is the continuous futures contract setting for? So when you click here, you have this drop down section. And basically, I'm just going to go over the first two areas. The first one, continuous futures contract date rule rollover. This option is good for stock index futures. And it's slightly faster than volume based rollover because it requires less time to analyze the volume across futures contracts loaded in the chart to determine the rollover date. So basically, sometimes you will have a chart um, for a futures contract and you like to look at two or three years back. But if this is turned off here and it says none, you will only be able to look at a certain amount of dates. 
So if you select a, the date rule rollover, this is gonna roll over all the futures contracts because remember they, they change every three months. So it's gonna add all of them onto the chart and it's gonna show you up onto the amount of days shown on the chart. Then the second option here that says continuous futures contract volume based rollover, the transition or the rollover date will be determined when the daily volume becomes greater from one contract to the next at a particular date. This method is perfect for commodity futures. So the first one is good for stock index futures and the second one is good to use for commodity futures. And then you select whichever you like to use, click A to apply and then apply all to make the changes in your chart. Number five, we have the price display format. Basically, this is just to change the decimal points shown on the DOM here. So if you change this to 0 0.1 and click apply all, it's gonna change the prices one decimal point less. As you can see here, instead of having the two decimal points, now we only have one. I recommend to leave it with the two decimal points as that's the default and that is how most stocks and futures contracts are set up. Number six, how to change the tick size of a chart to go from this to this. So here in the symbol settings, we have the tick size setting. In this case, when you open NQ or ES, for example, the default tick size is going to be 0 0.25. But in this case, you see, just like with many stocks, since the range is so big that you could barely see the TPO chart. So what you like to do is you want to change the tick size. You have to play with it for different stocks, but for NQ, I'd like to set it up to 1.25 then click A to apply the setting to the value and then click apply all and then it'll make the change on your chart. And now we have a better looking chart than all the letters bunched up together. Stick until the end to learn how to make the tick size changes permanent for each symbol. Number eight, how to make changes and apply global symbol settings for each particular symbol. So down here, if you click where it says apply global symbol settings, the apply global symbol settings is normally used when you already made a change to a particular symbol and you have different charts open um, already in use and you like to apply that symbol change without having to make the change on each chart one by one. So for example, in this case, I have already changed the tick size for the NQ globally. So if I want to make the change for this chart, all I have to do is click apply global symbol setting and it'll make the change here. You see now we changed to 1.25, then click apply all and then it'll take the changes for that particular symbol. To edit a global symbol setting, then you obviously want to click here where it says edit global symbol settings. The symbol setting window is gonna open up and then as you can see here, whatever you have an asterisk, it means that I've made a change um, for the NQ symbol. Something to keep in mind, if you change data feeds, for example, if you have Denali and decide to go with CQG data or any other data like Rhythmic, for example, the symbols are going to be different and you need to apply the changes to the symbol again. So in this case, I already made a change to the tick size here and to the currency value per tick. The reason why I made this change is because since I increased my tick size, I had to multiply each in increment by five to get the total tick size uh, currency value so that I could get the accurate amount when I'm looking at my activity log for the trades I've made for the day. I've had also changed the commissions here. So in this case, when I was using Rhythmic, I was being charged $2 per 
per trade per symbol um, using rhythmic. So that's why I put four dollars here because that's the round trip commission for buying and selling one contract. And then you have other options here. You can make changes. Just be careful. There are certain things that Sierra Chart doesn't recommend to make changes to, um, or that might be too advanced. So keep that in mind as well. And then whenever you make the changes here, remember to click OK and apply all to make the changes on your chart. And finally, number nine, as a bonus tip, this bottom option here, say days to low, intraday bar period, graph draw type as default. You can click yes here if you like. Basically what this is going to do is the days to low, you change them here in the data limiting, which I'm gonna talk about in the next video. It's also going to save your graph draw style. So if you have a candlestick chart and you, you have a select to candlestick, once you click yes here and apply all, those changes are gonna be saved. So whenever you open a brand new chart, instead of looking like this, which is the default chart uh, that comes with the app, it's gonna look more like how you have it set up. So in my case, it'll look like this. And that's all for today, guys. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to get the notifications for the new videos coming up for this series. Thank you for watching.